Limitless meat so delectable you need two people to prepare it? Find out why Fogo de Chao's meat tastes so good. If you're not up on your Portuguese, literally translated, Fogo de Chao means fire on the ground. To Brazilians, it's a cooking style special to their country that has spawned an entire category of restaurants in North America. As Fogo de Chao's Fort Lauderdale general manager Wanderson Oliveira told Mashed, you see the fire here on a very high-level grill. But back in the day, even back home, the fire is literally on the ground with sticks and skewers around with meat. And you carve, and you serve, and you eat right there. Oliveira went on to further explain that Fogo de Chao's gauchos understand this tradition and take great pride in continuing it inside the restaurant, no matter the location. We want to feed people. We want to feed you. We want to try this, try that. What do you think about this? And we do that with passion. Each of Fogo de Chao's cuts is rated USDA choice or higher, according to both Oliveira and Fogo de Chao's Southwest Regional Director, Rudimar Bonfada, a sure sign of quality that ensures every steak that glides by you is some of the best beef in the country. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's website, beef is graded in order to make business transactions easier, so purchasers know the quality of beef they're paying for before it shows up at the door. USDA inspectors visit slaughterhouses and packing facilities to evaluate the product, rating beef as prime, choice, or select. Prime is the top grade you'd find at high-end steakhouses. Next up is choice, which USDA describes as still a very high-quality cut, only with less marbling. Select is the lowest grade, and though still very good, it has the least marbling and is the leanest of the three. Beyond that, producers make ungraded and commercial beef, which are typically store-brand cuts. Once the meat is selected, it arrives at Fogo de Chao and is placed in refrigerated storage. According to Wanderson Oliveira, boxes upon boxes of steaks are delivered two to three times a week. Fogo de Chao then ages the meat for 21 days to enhance and concentrate its flavor before it's prepped for the grill. Oliveira explained that the amount of beef his restaurant orders is based on expected reservations and how many cuts each restaurant goes through. It's then placed in rotating storage, so the steaks that have been aged the longest are near the front. This ensures every steak that's served out on the restaurant floor has been properly aged, but never left in longer than it should be. Most of what an average Fogo de Chao guest sees of the restaurant's gauchos is their skillful slicing of steaming cuts of fresh beef and their intricate explanation of what each bit of steak is. But their job is far more than that. Two shifts of gauchos work every day the restaurant is open, with assigned pairs responsible for specific cuts of meat. As general manager Wanderson Oliveira told Mashed, gauchos that come in in the morning, they're more responsible to prepare. So the person that is going to come for the evening half, he'll be all set up because his partner will have made sure that everything was nice on stage four. So for example, if one pair is assigned bacon-wrapped chicken, the early gaucho will spend most of his shift prepping and skewering the meat, and possibly putting the first few skewers on the grill. The later gaucho will be responsible for cooking, watching, and serving the meat during dinner. While this might sound simple, it involves an intense amount of training and expertise, which has gauchos training for about a month to get prepared. Our gauchos are southern Brazilian chefs. They've been trained to cook, to prepare, and to serve the meat. As Oliveira explained, it's paramount to them because it's all about the timing. We want to show them in the beginning of the training how the meat's supposed to look, and the temperature of well done versus medium well. Though Rodizio originates from a style of cooking that was simply lighting a fire on the ground, Fogo de Chao has elevated the experience by utilizing a special grill and specific charcoal. According to Rudimar Bonfada, each restaurant uses a special lump charcoal that ensures the temperature is right for the proper cooking of the steaks, telling Mashed, where we cook the steaks is a little hotter than where we cook other cuts of meat. All our beef cuts, you want to sear the outside. Then you elevate to a higher place on the grill where it won't be so hot. And from there, it continues to make that steak more tender before we serve. The grill, called a peninsula grill, is a multi-level racked grill with fire on the bottom, where longer cooking steaks are placed on the top and shorter cooking ones on the bottom. It protrudes out from the steak display case and kitchen, giving guests a chance to watch their meat cook while they peruse the salad bar. 
Fogo de Chao puts their gauchos through some serious training, and while Oliveira says they have some guidelines for how long certain cuts should sit over the fire, the meat preparation is more an art than a science. So the gauchos, who are responsible for cooking the meat, as well as serving it, operate more on sense and feel than on a set time that something needs to be cooked. One might think slicing beef for hungry guests and cooking meat would be a tough balancing act. Presentation is key. 15 different cuts of meat are carved table side. But Oliveira says the gauchos have mastered it. Saying of the gauchos, they're really proud of what they do, and they take accountability for it. You could probably wrap bacon around a piece of rotting driftwood and it would taste delicious. Fogo de Chaos understands this, and in addition to its regular selection of fire-grilled meats, also serves a number of items wrapped in bacon, which, according to Fogo de Chaos' website, is hardwood smoked and honey cured. This begins with bacon-wrapped chicken breasts cooked high on the peninsula grill so the bacon juices have time to saturate the meat. Fogo de Chao also offers medallos con bacon, described on the menu simply as steak or chicken wrapped in bacon. Depending on the night, Fogo de Chao will also wrap several of its steak in bacon, though Oliveira says which cut gets the bacon treatment changes regularly. Fogo de Chao keeps a consistent lineup of steaks, spelled out easily on its website so you can start salivating before you even make a reservation. Once the meats start arriving and you start tasting these different flavors, that's when the people really start to get excited. Those include some standards you already know and love, like filet mignon and porterhouse, but also some special Brazilian steak cuts like the iconic picanha. The circular grain top sirloin, that's the prime part of the cut, sliced extra thin at the table. You'll also find beef ancho, which is essentially a bone-in ribeye, and fraldinha, which is a heavily marbled bottom sirloin popular in southern Brazil. But unless you're getting rodezio every week, you'll likely see at least a few things different every time you go to Fogo de Chao, with both the salad bar and meats getting tweaked based on the season. As Wanderson Oliveira told Mashed, we might bring in a different cut of ribeye or a porterhouse. We always stick with our main core means, but every season we try to bring something different. Take a look at some of the meat display cases around Fogo de Chao and you'll see a special selection of steaks being dry-aged too. Now, you've probably heard the term dry-aged thrown around a lot. Dry-aging is pretty specific and has some serious science behind it. According to Rudimar Bonfada, dry aging involves storing steaks in a temperature and humidity controlled locker to dry the steaks, yielding about 30% less meat than when you started due to evaporation of moisture. This concentrates the flavors, making them more robust. At the same time, enzymes begin breaking down the meat, creating a more tender cut as well. While it might be reasonable to think that a Brazilian steakhouse would source its beef from Brazil, Fogo de Chao's supply chain carbon footprint isn't that big. According to Bonfada, all of Fogo de Chao's beef comes from the good old U.S. of A, sourced from the heart of cattle country in the great Midwest. While he wouldn't elaborate on which state specifically, it's still comforting to know the beef comes from relatively close by. As he told Mashed, we source our beef mostly from suppliers who are leaders in sustainable business practice, starting with the suppliers we work with, who are committed to serving the most wholesome, safest food. He did not elaborate on which sustainable practices he was referring to, but minimizing fuel and transportation costs in sourcing beef is always a good first step. With such flavorful meat, some might assume that Fogo de Chao has a proprietary spice blend it puts on all its steak to make them taste so delicious. This is not at all the case. The secret to Fogo de Chao's great flavor? Simple rock salt, a simple yet effective seasoning that brings out all the wonders of what Fogo de Chao grills. How it's applied and how much is also part of gaucho training, and though relatively simple, it is of utmost importance. As Rudimar Bonfada explained, once the gauchos get in the habitual consistency of doing this every day, it's all done by eye. They develop such an expertise to get to that level. While the steaks can hold their own with just a sprinkling of sea salt, other meats need a little more love to get them up to Fogo de Chao standards. This starts with its trademark frango, a chicken leg served on a skewer. Before the chicken gets the full rodezio treatment, though, it's marinated for hours in a special marinade consisting of beer, brandy, paprika, garlic, lemon, onion, and pepper. Bonfada explained the mixture to Mash, saying, We use the onion and pepper to enhance the flavor of the meat. The beer and brandy help the meat absorb the flavor. Then we marinate the chicken for 24 to 48 hours before we serve it. Steak is the main attraction at Fogo de Chao, to be sure. 
but guests might be well served to check out some of the other meats the restaurant offers. Roving the dining room, you'll also see pork chops, pork rib, pork loin, and sausages, each grilled with the same attention to detail and meticulous care as the trademark steaks. One can't-miss item circulating on skewers is Fogo de Chao's lamb chops and prime lamb picanha. Both are marinated in a recipe completely different from the one the restaurant uses for chicken. This one is made up of white wine, lemon, and epic amounts of mint. The result is a crisp, citrusy bite that contrasts the richness of the lamb. The mint gives it an herbal finish that makes the chops taste almost like a savory tea, a flavor you likely won't find on menus elsewhere. Fogo de Chao offers an entire menu of specialty steaks that are even more flavorful than the stuff the gauchos bring by. The aforementioned dry-aged tomahawk is one of the more popular from this supplemental menu, offering an exceptionally flavorful option for those who want something extra. Also on the menu are a couple of American Wagyu cuts, an ancho and a New York strip. For the unfamiliar, Wagyu is a term that originally referred to any cattle originating from Japan, and only four breeds in Japan are considered Wagyu today. Considered to have superior marbling and flavor, American ranchers began importing Wagyu cattle in the 1970s, and today you can find both American and Japanese Wagyu beef on menus. Fogo de Chao's offerings are served sizzling on a salt block, which adds to the flavor and flair whenever one is ordered.